Hello there everyone and welcome back to our virtual science classroom. This is your teacher Da, teacher Daniel Dalmundo. And today, we are going to tackle about new topic, which is all about measurement of matter. And once again, welcome to general chemistry class. First and foremost, we need to know what measurement is because our goal is to express quantity properly using a number and a unit. So what we need to remember is that chemists measure the properties of matter and express these measurements as quantities, meaning to say in numbers. A quantity is an amount of something and consists of a number and a unit. So do not forget that, a number and a unit. The number tells us how many or how much, and the unit tells us also what the scale of measurement is so that we can know or we can distinguish from one measurement to another. So what we need to know is that, for example, when a distance is reported as 5 kilometers, so you have already in mind, we know that the quantity has been expressed in units of kilometers. Meaning to say, you are talking about the path of the road that you are that you took already. Okay? That number is kilometers. And number is five. The number is five. So meaning to say, we all know that we are talking about kilometers, but it identifies the number five. Right? Because there are a lot of measurements that later on we will discuss or the units that I think we are familiar with because we encounter it in everyday life. So for an instance, we have this example. We have 5.2, which is the number, and kilometers is the unit. So again, it is composed of number and a unit. That's what measurement is all about. Imagine this. Without units, a number can be meaningless, confusing at the same time, or possibly life-threatening. So when you are inside the hospital, so there's a lot of numbers that is always incorporated with units. So if you do not know how to read those units and numbers at the same time, it could be like threatening. Alright? So might as well learn how to read measurements because both a number and a unit must be included to express a quantity properly because without that, everything is devastated. Right? And of course, there is what we call system of measurement, which includes the international system of measurement. So we have quantity, and quantity includes length, mass, time, temperature, volume. Okay. And it is divided actually into three. It can be expressed into three. We have the English metric system, metric system, and then the SI system. So here in the Philippines, we usually familiar with metric and the SI system. So in English, when we are talking about length, they use foot, right? While in metric system, they use meter, same as with the SI, right? And then we have mass. In English, metric system, they use pound. Okay, here we use gram and kilogram in SI unit. In time, in English, they use second, the same, second, minutes, hours, okay? In temperature, usually in English, metric system, they use Fahrenheit, okay? And then we have Celsius and we have Kelvin, right? Actually, these three is different from one to another, but mostly uh, other parts of Western country and other parts of the country, they use Fahrenheit. But here in our country, in the Philippines, we use Celsius most of the time when we are talking about the weather. Right? And uh, of course, our body temperature when you are inside the laboratory, when you are going to uh, measure temperature of something, of a substance, we use Celsius. Usually, Kelvin is used in gas laws, right? And other form of uh, computation in chemistry, right? And of course, we have volume. We have gallon in English. And then here, we use metric, we have liter. And for SI, we have meter cube, right? Take note of this. Pound is English unit for weight. So it's seldom used slug is the English unit for mass, okay? So when you encounter this pound, foot, 
Fahrenheit and Galon, you are in other part of the country, and that is English metric system, right? You must be familiar with those terms because here are the other terms that you should remember when we are talking about measurement in matter. Number one, mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object does not affect by the location. The matter itself is definite. So when you have an object, for example, a ball, it has a definite amount of matter. All right? So whatever, uh, wherever the location of that ball, it contains the same amount of mass. All right? Or amount of matter. And that's the mass of the object. All right? And of course, we have volume. In volume, it is the length in meter cube. Just get the length, height, and width. Or length times height times width. Then you will get the cubic meter. Alright? So the volume of liquids, on the other hand, is different from uh, the cubic meters. Because here, it's more on uh, solid. While volume of liquids, of course, we measure liquids. We use liters. Alright? And, of course, we have weight. So, sometimes weight is associated with mass. But weight is a gravitational force attraction exerted by the Earth on a body. So, it is the gravitational pull. Right? So, meaning to say, if you have a bigger body, especially when you are here on Earth, okay, you have a bigger body, it means you have a lot of mass. Right? So, you have bigger weight or you are become heavier right but when you go to moon so the gravity there is force there's no gravity or not much of gravity there so when you go to the moon almost like one third of your weight is being cut off so you're, you feel lighter there okay that's why when you are when you go there it's like you are floating you can jump okay because your mass doesn't uh, make no difference, but the gravitational force, all right? And your weight there is different in the moon and here on Earth, all right? And of course, there is what we call density. Density is a property of matter. It's a unique property of matter, actually, that depends on its mass and volume. And it can be expressed mathematically as density it was mass over volume all right and you can use this triangle okay for you to derive what equation or what formula you're going to use but if you are looking for density it is mass over volume okay remember that the density of water is one gram per milliliter or meter cube here and everything that is greater than one it will sink okay in the water of course and if it is less dense meaning to say it is lighter it will float okay like ice so when you put ice in the water it will float because it is less dense right greater dense it will sink okay and then we have specific gravity so when uh, specific gravity comes into the place it is the ratio of the density of a substance to the density of a substance as well so the reference substance for solids and liquids is usually water like what i've said a while ago so when we get there you need to find specific gravity you need to find the mass of the object over the mass of the water for you to get the specific gravity right so here on earth we have constant quantity of or constant number or measurement of gravity and of course these are the si prefixes that we should be familiar with so we have giga mega kilo hecto deca and then we have the base unit so we have here one and then deci, centi, billi, micro, nano. From the base unit downward, of course, it is decreasing. But when you go upward, okay, starting from the base unit, it is increasing. 
right? Meaning, say giga, the symbol is G, big letter G, meaning it is 10 raised to the 9th power. Okay, it has 9 zeros. And mega, it has 6 zeros. Then kilo, it has 3 zeros. Hecto has 2 zeros. And of course, deca has 10 zeros. And these are the order of magnitude. 10 raised to the 6th, 10 raised to the 3rd power, 2nd power, and to the 1. And usually, if we use 1, we don't need to write it. And of course, on the other hand of this, like it's decreasing, we use negative. By the way, these are superscript. So when you see numbers on the top of a number, that's a superscript. The numbers at the bottom of the number, that is subscript. All right? So these are superscript. So we have negative 2, negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, so on and so forth. All right? So when you go up to the base unit, increasing in number. When you go down from the base unit, that's increasing in number. So those are the prefixes that we use, okay, for us to be able to determine if the object increasing in measurement or decreasing in measurement. All right. And of course, we have to convert measurement as well. So if we cannot directly get it from, for example, from English to metric system or metric system to metric system. We need to use of conversion. So the ability to convert from one unit to another is an important skill. A unit can be converted to another unit of the same type with a conversion factor. So this is an example of it. If you learn that SI units and prefixes described, then you know that one centimeter is one over one hundred of a meter. It's like this one. One centimeter is equal to one over one hundred. Meter. So, meaning to say, in 100 centimeters, there is only one meter. Right? The word centi, it has two zeros. So, meaning to say, in one meter, which is the base unit, it has equivalent of 100 centimeters. Right? And of course, we have another example. Let's have this. How many centimeters are there in 3.55 or 3.55 meters? Perhaps you determine the answer in your head already. All you have to do is to what? Move the decimal points. If you are already familiar with the conversion unit. So, if there are 100 centimeters in every meter, then 3.55 meters equals 355 centimeters. And this is how we get it. Put it like this way, 3.55 meters over 1, so automatically it is, or uh, it has the denominator 1, because that's automatic. And then, for us to get centimeters, remember that in every 1 meter, there is 100 centimeters. So you put it at the numerator, and then divide it again in 1 meter. So you all you have to do is to cancel the same unit, so that you can now get the answer for this one. So 3.55 times 100 centimeters. Since there's no more, the same unit. We already canceled the meters here. So we will get 355 centimeters. All right? And that's uh, easy for you. And uh, for you to be able to know the conversion, I want you to have a copy of this. Memorize it and at the same time, as much as possible, paste it on your notebook. All right? So we have the customary metric conversion. We have your length, weight or mass, capacity. We have also the metric to customary conversion from length, weight, or mass to capacity as well. So we have here an example. In one inch, there is 2.54 centimeters from English to metric system. All right? And then we have one foot, there are 0 0.305 meter. In one yard, there is 0 0.914 meter. And we have in one mile, it is equal to 1.61 kilometers. So that you will have an idea how to convert it or the base form of conversion is all about.
Then in one ounce, there is 28.3 grams. In one pound, we have 0 0.454 kilograms. Okay, and so on and so forth. We have one quart that is equal to 0 0.946 liter. And we have in one gallon, there is 3.79 liters. And then this one. Okay, be familiar with this and have a copy in your notebook. Okay, do not forget it. And of course, we have to familiarize with it. And the next important thing for us to measure matter is all about scientific notation. So scientific notation is very important when it comes to dealing with numbers, specifically because we need to become precise okay, and accurate at the same time. So what is it? Scientific notation is a system of expressing very large or very small numbers in a compact manner. So meaning to say we're going to make it in a smaller scale. Not totally scale, but uh, it's like you are making a bonsai. Right? From a bigger tree, you're going to make it little. So when it is very small or very big number, we're going to compact it. We are going to compress it. All right? And uh, it is uses the idea that such numbers can be rewritten as a simple number multiplied by 10 raised to a certain exponent or a power exponent or the superscript that we have. So scientific notation is express numbers using powers of 10. Okay. Again, we use powers of 10 for us to express those bigger and smaller numbers. So 10 here is very important. So we have here as an example, 1.5 times 1 million, it means that 1 million has how many tens? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's why it has 6 zeros, right? So when we get the power of 10 of the million, we will get 10 raised to the 6th power. So when we use scientific notation, since this is 1.5 million, so we will get 1.5 times 10 raised to the 6th power. And that's how are you going to write scientific notation. Instead of using 1, 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, you will use 1.5 times 10 raised to the 6th power. Is that clear? It's easier, right? So remember this formula. So in writing scientific notation, we have M or N times 10 raised to N power. So meaning to say M here is the number part times here meaning to say times the power of 10 okay, raised to the power of N. All right? It depends on how you move the zeros. All right? Okay, so whether you move it to the left, whether you move it to the right, it depends as well. So later on, you will see that. And how many movements did you make? Okay? Let's uh, proceed to the next one. So here, we can recall that 10 point raised to the 0 is 1. 10 raised to 1 is 10. 2, 100, 3, 1,000, 4, of course, 10,000, and so forth. Okay, remember this. Convert to scientific notation. So we have here 3.25000000. All right, so we have nine units to the left. So when we move it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, until we reach here. Okay, so when we use this unit and when we move this point or decimal point to the left, okay, we use positive exponent. All right, so it will become 3.25 times 10 raised to the ninth power. Because although the decimal point of this number is invisible at the end, it is automatically there. Okay? It's like an imaginary decimal point uh, at the end of this number. Okay? So when you move it, just count how many movements you move to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you have 9 units to the left, meaning to say, that you will use a positive exponent and also express that this number is a big number all right 
kasi yung may positive exponent, it is bigger number. On the other hand, we have 0 0.0000004. Okay, so from this point, we move it 7 units to the right. Okay, so we have 4 times 10 raised to negative 7. Negative exponent, it means that you have smaller number. And remember, class, that when you use here, the number over here, and the number over here, you will use 1 to 9.9. .9. Okay? You cannot exceed 10. Always remember that when you use scientific notation, the number here must be expressed or must be written only from 1 to 9.9. .9. When you exceed to 10, it's a no-no. Is that clear? All right. Okay, let's go to the next one. In here, you will have your written work number three. Let's try. Can you do this? So you need to express each number in a scientific notation. So we have your number one, number two, and number three. You can write it on your notebook. All right? Go ahead, take a screenshot of it. All right. And of course, the next part of this is what we call rounding up. I know you are already uh, familiar and you have a background on what rounding up is all about. So to round off, these are the steps. We have two steps. Number one, simply drop the digit that follows if the first of them is less than five. Thus, 6.723 rounds off to 6.72 because 3 is less than 5. That's why you need to drop down 3. Okay? Remember that. And number 2, if the first digit following the point rounding off is greater than 5, therefore, add 1. If it is 5 and above, add 1. Was to the preceding digit, thus 5.928 rounds off to 5.93. So here, 8 is greater than 5, so we need to add 1 to the number before that number, okay, which is greater than 5. So 2 becomes 3. That's why the answer is 5.93. Okay, it's easy, right? And uh, here are some, uh, a little bit of practice again. You need to round off the following numbers to the nearest hundreds because here we have tens. After the decimal point, this is tens, hundreds, and thousands. Okay, so nearest, nearest hundreds meaning to say the second number after the decimal point. So we have number one number two and number three 